has your child been diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder? If this is you, I made this video for you to help you view it potentially through a different lens. Okay, so many, many, many pathologically demand avoidant children were first diagnosed incorrectly as oppositionally defiant. Okay, so what is PDA? PDA is actually a neurotype or a way of having the brain wired where every time the survival part of the brain perceives that the child is not equal to or above you or someone else around them or is not perceiving autonomy, freedom, and choice, their brain actually tells their nervous system, hey, you're going to die. And then they respond with fight flight behavior, which is actually reflexive and automatic, right? So this may look like opposition and defiance, but it's actually driven by a nervous system response and not under their control. So if you think this might be your child, here are some things to think about so you can dig a little deeper. One, um, is this impacting your child's basic needs. So what happens for a PDA child is that they're constantly perceiving threat, even if they don't have the oppositional defiant behavior. They may be masking it in certain scenarios like school or with the grandparents or even in therapy. And then it comes out with you, the safe person. But they're constantly perceiving threat. And as this builds, it starts to disable them from accessing things like eating. Maybe they've stopped eating or maybe they're binge eating. Sleeping. Maybe they move to a non-24 hour sleep cycle or have to co-sleep with you or else they can't sleep at all and they're constantly moving bedtime later and later. Maybe they've had a toileting regression where they were fully potty trained and now they'll only go in a diaper or in the bathtub or outside. And then finally they're resisting hygiene like brushing teeth and bathing. Okay. The second thing I want you to think about and look at critically is social communication, okay? So PDA children often have pretty typical verbal development. They make eye contact. They're often social in nature. However, there are subtle communication differences. For example, does it sometimes seem like your child actually doesn't hear you when you're talking to them? Does it seem like your child has asynchronous processing where they learn something and it might take them a much longer time to actually like process the information or as they learn are they learning really from the bottom up like really specific details first and then over time they can generalize it up to a larger concept rather than being presented with or understanding a big concept and then coming up with ideas that are examples right and then finally sensory differences. So PDA children have sensory differences like sounds could be too loud unless they're in control of making the sound. Um, they could be very sensitive to smells. They could gag around certain foods or smells. They could avoid or defiantly not throw things away in the trash can because they actually are having a sensory response to the smell, but they're not gonna say that to you, right? And then finally, the thing I want you to think about is the fifth and maybe the most important question, which is, is working through an oppositional defiant disorder lens serving you and your family? Is being stricter, more consistent, not letting them get away with things, actually making it more peaceful in your home? Is it making it seem like your child is happy that you have connection? Or is it actually escalating more and more? Because if it's the latter, then I wanna invite you to approach it differently. Do a little research or hang out on this page about um, pathological demand avoidance and learn ways of accommodating your child and lowering their threat response so that they can start connecting again, lowering the meltdowns and, and accessing their basic needs so that you can be peaceful as a parent and so that you can connect with them and so that they can be successful and happy in their life as who they are.